this is night and day difference. And this is just claying. Now, yeah, there are things here that have to be repainted. I mean, if I had the money and I was keeping this car, something that I'm still thinking about. <laughs> hey guys. Well, the time has come to start claying the car. And that, it, in my opinion, is the first step in order to get the paint ready for polishing and waxing. So, uh, disclaimer here, I am no expert. I, um, prior to um, doing all of this, I've done claying only a, a couple of times. And um, there are plenty of videos out there that can help you really become proficient at this. And um, so what I'm showing you here is what I do. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's done right, or I'm certainly not telling you how to do this. But the uh, clay bar works really well. I think there's a lot of hype about how to do this and do the other. You're going to scratch or damage. I mean, you know, make your own decisions when it comes to, uh, to this process. Use some common sense and do your best to um, to get good results. I mean, that's what I did here. And uh, as you can see, I'm using pl plenty of uh, lube, uh, lubricating uh, fluid, and I'll provide links to the uh, to the products I used. And, uh, and that should help you really uh, achieve good results. You can just see the um, kind of like a slurry that comes off every time that uh, that you do on the area. So keep a good microfiber towel handy so you can remove all that stuff. Otherwise it'll make a mess. Another, th another thing that I really like about the um, claying process is that it allows you to get into uh, kind of tight places and uh, nooks and crannies, something that uh, a machine has trouble doing. Uh, not that I'm saying that there are machines to do this process. I, actually, I have no idea. But um, the stuff works really well. It gets kind of saturated with all the um, dirt and, and stuff, minute particles that it's picking up. So again, based on what I've seen online, what you want to do is start stretching the, uh, the clay at some point and then folding it, trying to find, I suppose, clean areas so you do not scratch the paint or, God forbid, <laughs> create more um, damage. What we're trying to do is really remove um, a lot of the stuff that uh, has embedded itself into the paint, uh, like here, uh, little scratches and, and, and nicks and stuff like that. There's nothing that you can do, but um, like you'll see here in a second, Rotar, it's, 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 it's going to come right off. You know what, guys? I have this brilliant idea. And I think you're you're gonna like it. Just kidding. That's not funny. That's not funny at all. Okay, so I also clayed this area. There are a few imperfections here, chips and stuff. But um, boy, this stuff really works. And uh, I'll provide a link. This is the, uh, I bought it from uh, Amazon. I'll provide a link. To, uh, what do you call those? Oh, I can think. Oh, I'll provide an affiliate link to my Amazon store. And you can check it out. You can buy the clay bar and the lube itself. Good stuff. So let's give it a once over, see what you guys think. Alrighty. Yeah, this was really, really rough to the touch when I was adjusting this hinge. You could hear my hands just, it sounded like sandpaper. But this is night and day difference. And this is just playing. 
Now, yeah, there are things here that have to be repainted. I mean, if I had the money and I was keeping this car, something that I'm still thinking about, <laughs> um, I would have it completely repainted the original shade of white, which is a little more of a cream, beige kind of white. But that right now is not in the cards. And maybe the next owner wants to uh, give it the, uh, the royal treatment, as they say. But, and again, this is just a uh, spot here. You know, there's areas because of the, uh, of the clay lube, you know, it, there's some streaking and stuff. But this is just, I mean, feels like glass. So, this is, and, and I'm no expert. So, uh, what I'm doing, I'm not telling you to do it this way. This is how I did it. And uh, I think it's pretty hard to to screw it up, really. See, there are little nicks and scratches, stuff like that. But again, this, again, this is a driver. So, I'm not going to sweat the details. There's no need for that. But boy, what a difference. So, next, I'm going to get my new... Uh, polishing uh, machine that I got from uh, Harbor Freight Tools. And I also bought, I've never used these type of pads, but uh, heck, I'm willing to give it a shot. So I got that. And I got plenty of waxes and polishes and all kind of um, products for that uh, purpose. So I think I'm okay as far as that is concerned. So that will be next. Okay, so this is my small selection or collection of um, polishes and I also have some waxes, of course, but uh, I think I am probably gonna use something like this first. I am debating whether I should use that or this. I think the paint is good enough that I could probably get away with this glaze. And, and then I can use some either um, this type of wax. I also bought this one a while back. And another one a friend gave me, and this is really good stuff. I'm just running low. I need to order one. This stuff is really amazing. So now when it comes to the uh, actual polishing, I've always done stuff by hand, but uh, that's slow. And I've seen a lot of videos where guys get, get great results from these dual action uh, random orbit polishers. So since this was on sale, it was a heck of a deal. I bought one of these a few weeks ago and I haven't even tried it yet, but you can uh, attach these pads with this kind of Velcro style um, head here and I bought these polishing pads, bought this fine cut show car finish and this one. Again, I have no clue what each color represents. I should do a little more research, but I am going to, I mean, this, this stuff is hard to uh, mess up, I believe. Uh, we're not sanding paint or anything like that. We're just going to uh, polish some of that. And I'll be careful because this paint here, um, you can see there's evidence of this getting really thin and uh, people just cutting right through it. So I have to be mindful of that. Uh, this show card glaze I think is going to work just fine. 
this is an older older bottle I've had it for years and uh, always a good idea to shake the uh, the product you're gonna use really really well to um, make sure that all the solids are dissolved and uh, they can do their stuff so I think I'm gonna start with the um, with this fine cut some of this show card glaze and uh, gotta get familiarized with the uh, with the polisher it's a big sucker but looks really really cool and uh, I think it's gonna it's gonna do the the job so before I start one thing that I like to do and again I'm not telling you how to do this I'm not teaching anything I'm just showing you what I'm doing what I like to do is prime the uh, the pad a little bit just to help it glide smoothly over the surface and then I'll put a few dabs here of the uh, product and you see the the routine where then they they tap the uh, they distribute the product a little bit I'm gonna I am going to start around this area there are some stains here I don't expect those to be gone same thing with the uh, little bubbling here this is where the emblem goes I just want to start with this area bumper you can see a little bit of the uh, discoloration here which is normal it's not nice but it's normal and I'm gonna do this front end I may show you little clips of other areas but this is pretty boring it's time-consuming but uh, I'll show you as much as I can because I want to you know get done with this project so and mostly I want you to see the uh, the finished product so let me set this up and uh, I will I'm, I'm not gonna be able to use the microphone for obvious reasons I don't want this well this wire get it caught somewhere and strangle myself <laughs> by accident so anyway I hope uh, this will give you just uh, an idea as to what I am doing here. Well, that was very, very nice, very easy to use, no numbness. I think that's a pretty good tool, a good value for the, uh, for the money. So now I'm going to use a microfiber towel to remove any, any excess, and I'm going to keep, keep going. To remove the uh, excess polish, what I'm going to use is this beautiful plush microfiber towel that the... Uh, Folks over at Griot's Garage gave me during the uh, Amelia Island Concorde d'Elegance. This is very nice. And um, I need to start buying better products and better towels. This, this is going to make a huge difference. Oh, yes. And all I'm doing is just lightly removing any hazing, any any excess product from the uh, polishing compound and this is a quick tip for you if you're gonna do any any work on cars especially like detailing and that sort of thing get yourself one of these foam pads for your knees trust me they are a lifesaver they're great not very expensive I think I paid ten dollars at a swap meet for for this one
beautiful. And granted, the paint is less than perfect. Again, it's an older paint job. I don't know the uh, type of paint. And there's still a few little, tiny little hints of a scratch here and there. But, of course, again, admitting that I don't know much about car detailing, but I am very impressed and pleased so far. You know, at least from my uh, uneducated perspective. And I think I mentioned one of the early videos. Eventually, I am going to try to touch up some of this area here, some of the chips. The paint, again, uh, there's a little bit of damage and uh, little cracks like, look like little spider webs <laughs> um, in certain areas. See? But from five to ten feet, it looks awesome. So you can, I guess we can call it a uh, ten footer. Uh, maybe a five footer. Let's be more generous. But uh, anyway, this is looking really, really nice. Again, from my perspective. So I'm just going to keep on doing this for another hour I guess and um, I'll show you little tidbits of what I am doing and hopefully um, you'll get the uh, the gist and maybe a little bit of inspiration to uh, to take care of your your C3 and another quick tip that probably all of you guys know already when I'm dealing with extension cords sometimes it is so annoying when something gets unplugged because you you pulled on the uh, cord and you no longer have electricity so what i like to do and again i'm sure you guys are familiar with this little trick just tie a light knot and that'll keep that hopefully from happening i've said it before i live in Jurassic Park. I don't even know what is making that noise out there. I think, uh, White paint is difficult to uh, polish, at least from my perspective, because reflections are not the same as when you're dealing with a, with a darker vehicle. And there are a few areas, I'm gonna touch that up a little bit, see if I can, I don't think the camera will pick it up. It's a little, little bit of a dull spot there like it's not polished. Um, see, I don't know if the uh, camera shows this. There you go. So I'm gonna do my best. And uh, there are little, tiny little scratches here. Sometimes though, keep this in mind, especially if the vehicle has been repainted, it may be scratches from below during prep of the surface. It's not all scratches from the top. Those usually you can, you can get to uh, come off quite easily actually, especially with a, uh, a polishing uh, machine. So I'm gonna try to address this a little bit. There's a couple of areas like that. You can see a little hazing there when I, when I go over them. Anyway, again, it's, it is challenging, but uh, regardless, it's gonna be a heck of an improvement. And listen, I know this is boring stuff, but uh, I just wanna give you some of the uh, 
steps that I'm taking in real time so you get an idea in case you want to do something similar and like me, you haven't done it yet or you don't have the, uh, the machine to do it. So um, just to try to be helpful and mostly show you what I am doing to my car. Okay. By the way, I am using uh, between a four and a, and a five, sometimes even a little faster six setting on the uh, the polisher and that seems to be working just fine i think i mentioned already there's a couple of areas that are very very thin so i mean being mindful of that just to avoid um, making that area worse so anyway i think you got a pretty good gist of what's involved here. I am going to do the other side of the hood, then fenders, doors. There is an area here, again, it's very hard to show, but right there, it looks very dull. I don't know what happened there. So I'm really gonna concentrate on those areas. Same thing back here, this looks pretty pretty bad. I already polished this once. It was an improvement, but I'm going to go over it again, of course. Yeah, that area there is very questionable. Alright, guys. So far, I've been at this for about, between filming and all of that, of course, about an hour. So, to do this whole car properly i don't i shouldn't even say properly the way that i'm doing this between the claying polish some extra attention to uh certain areas and eventually the waxing uh, i would say about it's a four to five hour job so it's like a, a good half a day give or take and uh it's always worth it so I'll show you some of the progress as I, as I make some. So I'll be back soon. Wow. That is all I have to say. And one more time, I don't know what weight these are, who makes them. And I, I, uh, I appreciated Griot's Garage. They gave me two of these. So that was really nice of them. And I hope I'm saying Griot's, um, that's the way to, <laughs> to pronounce that, right? Oops, I should have checked. Anyway, it's looking great and this is just a polishing uh, step I still have to do the waxing which I hope is going to bring even more shine and uh, definition to the to the whole thing so I found another area here that I don't know what's going on there. I think it's like a touch up because this is raised. Hmm. Some of the things I'm just going to leave alone. I am not qualified to make <laughs> uh, decisions as to what to do in some of these cases, but Boy, oh boy, would you look at that? So, I wanna do the rest of the fender, door, walk, walk all around the, uh, the car, finish on that side. So, I'm really happy with uh, how this is turning out. Leaving a comment, and of course, if you're enjoying this video, Please take a second to give it a like. It doesn't cost anything and it helps quite a bit from what I understand. And needless to say, your subscription is really, really appreciated. 
So I am going to keep going and I will see you in a bit. So I finished polishing this area and I used both the um, fine cut cleaner and the uh, show, show car glaze. And boy, it cleaned it up really good. It could still use another, another um, treatment here. I, um, I think it could benefit this car Maybe not the front necessarily, but doors all the way back, excluding the uh, the bumper, wet sanding. But I am not qualified to do that, really. But this has been a heck of an improvement. It was really hazy, and uh, it looked really bad. So I'm very pleased with that. So I ha all I have left is the door and the front fender for this side. The rest is it's all done. And uh, I'm really happy with uh, how it's looking so far. Again, this door could use a little wet sanding, I believe. Same thing for that panel. But overall, I mean, what a difference. And uh, let's see, 2.15, I started at about, what, 11 a.m., if memory serves. So 12, 1, 2, so it's three, three hours, three and a half hours so far into this project. So by the fourth hour, I should be done with all the uh, polishing since I only have that door and the fender. And then I got to I got to use either this or this and do the uh, the actual waxing just to protect all of this. OK, four plus hours. And it, so far, it's been clayed and polished. And what a difference. I know it's hard to, to see through the, through the camera lens, especially because it's a, it's a wide vehicle. But let me tell you, it's pretty amazing. Between red, white, and blue Corvettes. I don't know, I have a hard time deciding which one I like best. White Corvettes look good, regardless, uh, regardless of generation, I think. So, gosh, I'm bushed. Four hours plus, and I still have to do the, the waxing. Like I show you, this is nothing to write home about. It's uh, it's a mess, but so be it. So, what do you think? Leave me a comment. Let me know what you uh, what you think of the uh, project so far. And like I said, next I'm gonna wax it, and when I'm done, I'm gonna reinstall that emblem and uh, getting a little a little bit closer to being done with this project I'm still trying to decide what I'm gonna do I'm probably gonna order the other uh, kit for the lowering bolts the longer 8 inch bolts because I dislike how that looks
and I'm going to use a clean rag to remove the, to polish the wax and remove any excess. Okay, ready to reinstall this thing. I know some people don't like it, but I work with what I had and I think it looks pretty badass. So what I'd like to do is I'm gonna remove the uh, this backing pa uh, paper here and then I like to heat it up just just a little bit with the, with a heat gun. So it's really sticky, and then I'll reinstall it. There. I know some don't like it, but I think it looks pretty, pretty cool. And it can be easily replaced. So, Next, I don't know if I have the energy today. Gotta get some pin stripe for the uh, for the car. I think that looks so right on these. So, so this is pretty hard to to film, but I have a video dealing with installing pin stripe. So, I'm just gonna get started here, see how it goes. I hope it goes well. The white car is really hard to see the, uh, the line, but I'll do my best. Yeah, this is, this is pretty tough, but I think I'm, I think I'm on the, on the line there somewhere. <laughs> There's a little dip here. What that means is I have to undo what I just did and try to pull it kind of a little more straight here. Oh, and uh, once you have enough material here, you can just Cut the, uh, what you're gonna be using, if you're gonna be using it. Whew. Yeah, I have no reference here, so I'm totally, totally guessing. I'm trying to find that, that line here. Between light and shadow, it's not easy. Well, let's look at it from, from a distance. Actually, that ain't too shabby. So, yeah, that's pretty, pretty consistent. And what I like to do next is I like to bring them together to a point like that. Same back here, like I did on my 76. Yeah, this one you can see the, the little reveal line there. Here, I don't know, it's just a big guess. But again, from a distance, you just, the reason I do it is to give it a little more definition. That's it. So let me uh, show you what I do back here. I stop the, uh, 
that little point that I'm talking about right here, remove the excess. I just like to have a little extra to work with. It makes things easier. Let's give this a shot of, of course, the camera in front of me. Never a good idea, but anyway, let's see what I can do. Actually, I'm gonna put a piece of masking tape to have a, an exact reference on both for both sides. All right, so here's my stopping point. It should be about the same for both sides. And here, what I have to do now is separate because this uh, clear um, layer of material. So you end up with when you're done, you remove this, and you end up with two, just the two lines. Pretty cool system, actually. Been around forever. And trust me, I'm glad I don't have to attempt to paint these these um, pinstripes. <laughs> that would be a fail. All right. Okay. So now, this ends right here, and this one stays straight like that. Actually, we can put our knife here and cut it right there. Good. Then we can take this one, and I like to take it a little bit a ways back, not a huge lot, and then gently start tapering the line so they just end up This one, and I try not to overstretch the uh, vinyl so it doesn't, you know, these things have memory, you don't want it to shrink. That's that. Okay, so I got started a little bit just to save some time, and this one, I would say about half an inch to an inch away from this um, bumper piece. Not a big deal. And again, I'm gonna use the, uh, the top one to start ta tapering toward the, uh, the bottom one. And there they are. Again, you don't have to cut into it. You just position your knife there. And that's it. So now, what we want to do is remove the, uh, the excess uh, clear tape here. So that is what keeps the, um, the two pinstripes even. And then you want to go over them, you know, kind of burnish them a little bit, make sure that they're adhering properly to the uh, to the fender. And I know these things are not for everyone. This car had blue pinstripes. These are the kinds of, I think they were painted on. Oh, it looks like vinyl actually. Anyway, to me, these are period correct and they provide a little bit of definition, the sea of white, so. Yeah, and uh, to the back, I'm gonna try to do both sides. I'm still out here and it's now 10 after five. I started this project. Um, I did the claying last night. This morning I started with the polishing at around 11. And uh, so it's been a full day so far and uh, I'm gonna keep on going. Well, as you can see, the pinstriping is pretty subtle until you start getting up close. Then it's like, boom, it's there. And surprisingly enough, it only took me, I don't know, 45 minutes maybe, even less probably. And yeah, it's not perfect because I'm not 
a professional when it comes to this, but I think they, they turned out pretty, pretty good. And it's a, it's a little, it adds a little definition in my opinion. I, I know it's not everyone's favorite thing, but I like it. It is period correct. It looks good. It really defines the lines. I, I don't want to do anything on the hood because it is not necessary. I just want to give it this little accent here and there and that's it. So tomorrow we have a local um, cruise in and I'm going to be bringing the car there and I'll have a couple of shorts or uh, photos both probably of the event and uh, the car being there for the first time with some of the local guys the c3 corvette owners group i have yet to um, order the bolts for the for the rear of the car so i can bring that down a little bit looks hideous and uh that's it i mean for the most part it is done i mean i need to do a few little projects there is a leak from the uh steering ram so i have to address that let me open the hood real quick the the engine is i'm gonna keep testing things and uh making little tweaks here and there i think the uh the timing i may have to um tweak that a little bit shut up bird gosh and um but it's all there original running pretty darn good new spark plugs and uh a few other things so anyway for the most part this project is getting pretty darn close to uh completion the um the the, the claying the polishing helped quite a bit as you can imagine and um, so yeah the uh, the interior really is really really clean I cleaned the bucket seats made a video about that and uh, everything is fixed back here um, the carpet looks really good I am not using the uh, the floor mat because it kind of I don't like how it feels with the with a throttle so I just left it off and um, anyway inside I mean it's clean it is not perfect but it's pretty pretty nice so doors look good this is um, one that I got from my friend Mark so that is now repaired uh, nothing I can do about that stupid thing they did there so anyway the um i think i've done a lot of stuff i mean i have what like over 50 videos of different projects uh, t-tops are adjusted they look really nice everything is um pretty much done like i said i just have to address that uh steering leak and uh, hopefully i can I can get that taken care of without having to replace stuff. So, anyway, as always, I appreciate you uh, watching my videos and I hope you will give it a thumbs up and also leave a comment if you have something to share. And your subscription is always greatly appreciated. So, thank you for watching and I will see you next, next time. A lot of stuff coming up, so stay tuned. Thanks. Bye.